Hey y'all, <laughs> I am in the church parking lot, y'all, and the Lord just showed out in that church, y'all. This is going to, this, okay, if you did not watch the video I posted this morning, guys, <laughs> go back and watch it, because this will hit, this will hit your heart the way it's supposed to. If that message was for you that I posted this morning about a failed takeoff when it comes to your kingdom spouse, your your husband or wife, and I said God is doing like they, whatever they're doing, okay, whatever whatever is happening, you're you're separated from your spouse, you're divorced, they're engaged, whatever they're trying to do. I made a, a, a prophetic word. I released a prophetic word that God gave me this morning. He took me back to some things that happened last year. And uh, I even referenced Jeremiah 5.22, which is what Lord the Lord had gave me personally as I was standing in my marriage. So if you haven't watched that video, go back and watch it because I'm not going to explain it all on this one. But let me tell y'all how God just showed out, y'all. I went to this church today. This is my second time. The spirit is up in there, okay? So I was led to go back today, right? So... As soon as I walk in the church, y'all, I, I get a seat in the back. My sister in Christ, she came with me. So she's walking to the car right now. And she can testify. The Lord, y'all, just showed out in there, okay? So I have to release this video to y'all. My sister in Christ is just getting in the car because she was able to see how God really, really speaks in my life. And when this is not her first time seeing him speak to me where she's recognizing it. And I love my sister in Christ that came with me. I won't put her on camera, um, but you guys have seen me show, um, share her channel with you guys. Her name is Angie. Her channel is called, what is it called, Angie? Journey with Jesus. Journey with Jesus. So she has recognize God's hand in my life in person. She's seen things happen. Like I've, I've woken up with dreams for her, prophesied and told her what God told me to tell her. When we went to the church, the exact same thing had happened. So she has seen how, how God really works in my life. And I love when people are able to see that in person. Of course, I wish I could share that with the world, but God doesn't allow um, that to be shared with the world. He, he divinely connects you in ways with other people and they're able to see it. So she recognized what was going on today. So I'm just on here because I'm about to share this with y'all and Holy Spirit help me. Um, but let me start off by saying, cause I'm gonna title this video exactly how I got it in my spirit, exactly how this, uh, this pastor, this, this church just released it. Okay. Your, <laughs> You're, you're about to be married and mended, okay? Married and mended, all right? That's what I'm gonna title this video because God is speaking loudly. My, my bracelet is connect, is stuck to my shirt, guys. Like God is, God is speaking. So we walk into this church, right? We're getting us a seat in the back. As soon as I start, like as we're walking in, like they're coming on stage to sing. So I stand up and we're standing up, you know, praising and worshiping. I see this man all the way in the front row of the church with a blue hoodie on. He has a full beard. You can tell he's older because his hair is like thinning a little bit, but he has a full beard. And immediately I saw my ex-husband in this man. Like I, I immediately saw like the Lord jolted my spirit and it's almost like I saw a ghost. Yes, no, this was not my ex-husband that I saw, but this man looked like a older version of my ex-husband, right? We'll call him T. So I'm looking and I'm almost like at a standstill. So I lean over to my sister in Christ. I'm like, that man. I'm like, I just, I'm like that man. He he reminds me of my ex-husband, just in an older version. I'm like his beard, everything. And this man, y'all, he's in the front row of the church, second row, but he's in the front and he is praising Jesus like nobody's business. This man is clapping. He is praising. He is worshiping. But I was like, it's almost like I had seen a ghost because it was like I was looking at my ex-husband in older form and I could not stray away from it, right? So this man comes over and he tells us to switch to the other side. We can still stay in the same row. So we switch to the other side of the church. We're, we're still at the back, like by the door. I'm 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 so I don't mind being in the back. I don't like blocking other people with my height. So I don't mind sitting in the back. My sister in Christ don't either. We're there to praise God. So we don't have to be in the front. Um, but he switches us to the other side. We're still in the back and I'm praising, I'm worshiping, but I can't shake this man. And I keep looking at my sister in Christ and I'm like, 
this man, like, I'm like, it's freaking me out. I'm like, cause God was like nudging my spirit. Like I felt like this was my ex-husband in old man form. Not the man wasn't even that old. He had to be like in his late fifties, maybe early sixties is what he looked like to me. But I, I just saw my ex-husband in him and it was freaking me out. So I'm trying to praise and worship. I can't shake this feeling. So she's like rubbing my back, my sister in Christ. Cause I'm like, and the process getting emotional a little bit. So she's rubbing my back in, in the middle of everything. We're praising, we're worshiping, but I can't shake the fact that this man reminds me of my ex-husband. I'm like, I felt like my ex-husband was in the church. But again, this old man was getting down, y'all. Like he was praising, he was worshiping. And my ex-husband, he's not there with the Lord. He doesn't go to church. He watches YouTube sermons probably sometimes here and there, but he's not where he needs to be with God. But the Lord, it's like the Lord was highlighting this older man to me saying, this is what it's going to be like for T. He will, the end result will be him worshiping me. And I can hear the Lord. Oh, I don't want to get emotional. Okay, hold on guys. Hold on. Whew. I tell you guys all the time, I'm like, it's bigger than us. It's not about a marriage to me. It's about their marriage to Jesus for me. So it's him coming back. It's these prodigals going back to Jesus. It ain't about no prodigals coming back to us. And if you don't recognize that by now, you're not ready for marriage. So I'm not crying because of God saying a marriage restoration. I'm crying because God was saying, that's how T is going to be with me. He's going to praise me. He's going to worship me. So I'm, I'm listening to the, I'm praying, I'm worshiping. We sit down get to prepare for the pastor to bring the word. The pastor walks on the stage and he has love written across his shirt. And he's um, speaking from the book of Habakkuk, however you pronounce it, guys. We all be pronouncing it wrong if you ask me, but Habakkuk. Where he's speaking from that book, he's reading chapter 3 and he's talking about rejoicing even when you're going through the hard times, through the bad times, when you're in the fire, God gets in there with you. When you're in the pit, he pulls you out. When you are losing your mind, like God is with you and he's preaching. And again, he has love written across his shirt. So the same man, okay, let me actually back up. As the pastor is preaching, actually before he gets into the word, he's like, turn on the lights. And they're like, the lights are already on. So he looks above him, he's like, turn on these two lights. And the man that I that I felt looked like my ex-husband that God jolted my spirit towards, he turns towards the back. And it's like he looked like caught eyes with me. So now I could really see the man's face and it's hitting me even harder because he looks like my ex-husband in older, like old man form. Not old man, but older. So I'm I got nervous, guys, and I'm acting like I'm writing something on the paper. <laughs> and the pastor's like yeah, turn on these lights. All the lights aren't on yet. So the man's looking towards the back. He looks me in my eye. So my sister in Christ notices and she looks at me and she's smiling because it, it's just what was happening. You guys would have had to be there to experience God in this. But I know y'all feel me who this is for. So they turn on the lights for him. He starts preaching and he tells this same man the, that God highlighted to me, we're about 20, 30 minutes into the sermon. He tells the same man with the blue hoodie that looks like my husband, my ex-husband in old form. He tells him, he's like, come up here. And the man comes up. So I'm looking at my sister in Christ like, is this real? Out of all the people in the church, he chooses this man. And he goes, and bring your son Jeremiah with you. <laughs> so me, my sister in Christ is looking at me like, what? Because she, she watched my video this morning. And I talked about Jeremiah 522. The Lord had me read that to you guys. Today is 522. This would, would have been the second year anniversary of me being married to my ex-husband. So he's like, bring your son Jeremiah. So now I'm like, Lord, what are you doing? So he tells this man, he's like, this is how some of y'all are when y'all come in church with your burdens. And he tells uh, the man's son, Jeremiah, to jump on his back. So the, the man's son, the man who looked like my ex-husband, bent down. He let his son, Jeremiah, get on his back. And the man walks to the altar and he leans down. And the pastor is like, this is how you guys look when you bring your, your burdens to the altar, right? He's like, and you get up and you still have your burdens attached. So the man stands up and his son, Jeremiah, is still attached to his back, right? 
And the pastor's like, this is what you're supposed to do when you come to church. And Jeremiah is still on this man's back. The man walks to the altar and he puts Jeremiah down and he gets up, right? He's like, when you bring your, your burdens to the church, to the altar, you leave them at the altar. And he turns to the man who looks like my ex-husband. He's like, how do you feel now that you put that burden down? And the man's like, I feel good. And the man goes running down the aisle towards me i'm all the way in the back it looks like he's running towards me and the man has on a sweatshirt guys the blue sweatshirt on the front of it says love and god spoke he said yes love is gonna run towards you daughter just like that you're he's like t your your husband your god ordained spouse that you were married to he's leaving his burdens at the altar his life will be given to me love will run towards you this man y'all took off towards and it looked like i was all the way at the back of the the aisle guys so when the man ran down in the middle of the church he had love on his shirt and it was like he was running directly at me and i could hear the lord saying he will give his life to me he's going to leave his burdens at the altar t is going to his life will be saved love will run towards you the same way you saw him praising and worshiping that is how he's going to be with me and the lord just started to minister to me guys he just started to minister and I want to release that to you guys, even with Jeremiah that I read to you guys this morning. And if you haven't watched that video, this is not going to make a lot of sense to you. So watch that video. But Jeremiah means the one who I ordained is the meaning of Jeremiah's name. And the Lord is telling you, your husband, okay, your husband is going to give his life to him, to Jesus. He's going to come home. And when he does that and leaves his burdens at the altar, love is going to run full force towards you. I did not want to cry. <laughs> Guys, it's not about him mending your marriage. It's about him mending the marriage between him and your God-ordained spouse. And the Lord is saying he's doing that in this hour. He's doing it. And you guys have to trust him. And if you don't see that this is bigger than him bringing that man or that woman back to you. And that it's about him mending his heart to his. Like giving his heart to God. It's about saving souls. But for many of you, you've been wondering... Is my husband going to come back to you, Lord? Is my wife going to come back to you? And God is saying, yes. Yes, that person is leaving their burdens on the altar and they're giving their heart to God. And once they do that, everything else is going to fall in place. The love is going to run towards you. That is what the Lord is saying. And he spoke so loud. I can't make this up. And my sister in Christ was there to witness the whole thing. Like, I don't make... God spoke so loudly, guys. It's bigger than just him restoring a marriage to you. But for many of you, and this is going to hit home because you've been asking God, is he going to give his life to you, Lord? Is he coming back home? And the Lord is saying he's coming back home. And when he releases those burdens on the altar, that man is going to stand up and be a new man. And love is going to run towards you. That man is going to be so covered in love, you won't even know what hit you. And I hope you guys are feeling me in what I'm saying because I know it makes sense for who it needs to make sense to. At the end of the sermon, there was a lady who stood up. She stood up and her name was Tiffany. She was the last person the pastor had a call to the front who felt like this was their home church. And everybody came up to the front and the pastor said, there's one more person who's supposed to be up here who feels at peace. There's one more person. And the Lord highlighted this lady to me sitting in the, the, the seats. So I knew it was her. He said, there's one more person. Who are you? The same lady gets up and she comes to the stage and she's crying. And he says, what's your name? She says, Tiffany. Those of you that know that when the Lord gave me a dream last year about my marriage being mended, he called me Tiffany in the dream. That means manifestation of God. Tiffany in this church, she was not about to give up to join the church, get up and come to the front to join the church. She was the last one. And what God is saying by this part is that the manifestation that you are about to see, that is the end result. 
your marriage is going to manifest. You, woman of God, are the manifestation of God in your husband's life. You are going to be, bring the peace to his heart, to his life. The end result is the manifestation of God, what he told you. What he told you is the end result. Even if it's the last thing that's going to happen, it's his manifestation. Tiffany got up and she walked up to the front with tears in her eyes. This word is going to make sense to who it's for. I love you guys. I'm going to get myself together and get out of this church parking lot. But I had to release that word because God spoke so loud, so clear in that message. And if you are in it for your prodigal to come home to you, that it's not about that. That prodigal is going to give his life to God. And then love is going to run full force towards you because that man is no longer going to feel weight down and burdened by life and by what Satan has had him chained by. So I love y'all. I'm such a cry baby. <laughs> but it's happy tears. I love y'all. My sister in Christ is in the car with me crying too because she felt it. She realized every everything that I spoke to you guys about happened in this service today. Everything that God has shown me in my life. And you guys go, know that God gave me a choice if I wanted to have him restore my marriage or to write a new love story. I chose to write a new love story, but I still said, Lord, I don't know, let your will be done. So I don't know what that looks like for me, guys. He, Even though I said write a new love story, he could simply open the door and bring my, my uh, ex-husband back to me. I don't know, but I know this was a word that you guys needed to hear and just know that God is God and there's no other one like him. What he said is what it will be. I love y'all. Have a good Sunday. Be blessed. Yeah, I'm teary. My nose is runny. I'm a whole hot mess, but I got, I completed the assignment. I understood the assignment. So I love y'all. Have a good Sunday. Be blessed. Bye.